Good morning. Bobby, please read the problem and Bo, please translate. Flippin' physics. Determine the acceleration of a uniform solid cylinder rolling without slipping down an incline with incline angle theta. The rotational inertia of a uniform solid cylinder about its long cylindrical axis is one half mass times radius squared. Uh, assume the cylinder starts from rest. Acceleration equals question mark. The object is a uniform solid cylinder. It is rolling without slipping. The incline angle is theta. Rotational inertia equals one half mass times radius squared. And initial velocity equals zero. Billy. Is mechanical energy conserved while the cylinder rolls without slipping down the incline? Well, there is no force applied, so there is no work done by a force applied adding or removing energy from the system. There must be a force of static friction acting on the cylinder or it would not rotate. But the cylinder does not slide relative to the incline. So then there is no work done by the force of friction, so yes, Mr. P, mechanical energy is conserved. Bo, please continue from here. Well, initially the cylinder is at rest, so no kinetic. Initial and final point. Last you. Right. Let's set the initial point where the cylinder starts, and the final point after the cylinder has rolled down the incline a certain distance. Let's set the zero line at the same height as the center of mass of the cylinder when it is at the final point. Now I can say that initially the cylinder is at rest, so there is no initial kinetic energy. There are no springs in the problem, so no elastic potential energy, initial or final. So the only mechanical energy the system starts with is gravitational potential energy, and that equation is mass times acceleration due to gravity times height initial. The height final of the cylinder is zero, so it has no final gravitational potential energy. And at the final point, the cylinder is moving linearly and rotating, so it has both final translational and final rotational kinetic energies. Uh, so that is one-half mass times velocity final squared plus one-half rotational inertia times angular velocity final squared. And we might as well substitute in one-half times mass times radius squared for rotational inertia. Bobby, what did we determine last time about the velocity of the center of mass of an object which is rolling without slipping? The equation for the velocity of the center of mass of an object that is rolling without slipping is the same as the tangential velocity equation, only r is the radius of the object. And the final velocity of the cylinder is the velocity of its center of mass, so velocity final equals cylinder radius times angular velocity final. Oh, and if we square that equation, we can substitute velocity final squared in for radius squared times angular velocity final squared in our conservation of energy equation. One half times one half is one fourth and everybody, everybody brought mass to the party. Everybody brought mass. mass. One half plus one fourth equals three fourths and we can solve for the final velocity squared equals four-thirds times acceleration due to gravity times height initial. Now let's draw a triangle. If we define the displacement of the cylinder from the initial to final points as delta d parallel, or the displacement parallel to the incline, that is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And opposite the incline angle is the height initial of the cylinder. Therefore, sine of the incline angle, which equals opposite over hypotenuse, also equals height initial over the displacement in the parallel direction. Therefore, height initial equals displacement in the parallel direction times the sine of the incline angle, which we can substitute back into our equation for velocity final squared. Now, considering all the forces acting on the cylinder are constant, the net force on the cylinder is constant. Therefore, what class is true? Net force equals mass times acceleration. So if the net force is constant, the acceleration of the cylinder is constant. And we can use the uniformly accelerated motion equations. Correct. Billy, please pick out a uniformly accelerated motion equation and use it to solve for the acceleration of the cylinder in the parallel direction. We can use velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus two times acceleration times displacement, oh, all in the parallel direction. Um, we can substitute in our equation for velocity final squared, initial velocity equals zero, and 
Everybody, Everybody brought displacement in the parallel direction to the party. That is a lot to say. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Everybody brought mass. mass. And if we multiply through by one half, we get the acceleration of the cylinder parallel to the incline to be two-thirds the acceleration due to gravity times the sine of the incline angle. Wait, well, what about the mass of the cylinder? And the radius. Shouldn't those affect the acceleration? Right, so it is important to understand that the only variables which affect the acceleration of a uniform object rolling without slipping down an incline are the acceleration due to gravity caused by the planet, the incline angle theta, and the shape of the object. What I mean by the shape of the object is the factor in front of the mass times radius squared in the rotational inertia equation. That factor in front of the mass times radius squared ends up affecting the fraction in front of g sine theta in our final answer. Again, the mass of the object and radius of the object both end up canceling out of the equation and therefore do not have any effect over the acceleration of the object rolling without slipping down the incline. But of course, we need to test our answer. This incline has an angle of 15.3 degrees, and we are on planet Earth, which has an acceleration due to gravity of 9.81 meters per second squared. Therefore, the acceleration of this uniform solid cylinder should measure out to be 1.73 meters per second squared with three significant digits. We can measure the velocity of the cylinder down the incline, and the slope of a velocity as a function of time curve is acceleration. Therefore, the slope of the best fit line equation equals the acceleration of the cylinder down the incline. Our measured data shows the acceleration down the incline to be 1.73 meters per second squared. So, our mathematical prediction was 1.73 meters per second squared, and our measured data gave us 1.73 meters per second squared. What do y'all think of that? I like that. That's pretty the close. The physics works. The physics works. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics works. The physics works. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics <laughs> thank works. Thank you, Billy. And the thank you works. for learning uh -huh, with me today. Uh -huh. I enjoyed learning works. with you. The physics works. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics works. Yeah.